Hey everyone, I wanted to do a couple of videos for anyone who's new to my sensors and doesn't really know where to start. So the first video that I'm working on is the gateway video. So this is a serial gateway here. Uh, there's two types of gateways right now. There's an Ethernet gateway and a serial gateway. And the gateway is a device that's going to sit between your home automation controller and your sensors. So this will relay commands from your controller to your sensors and vice versa, from your sensors to your controller. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is go to the MySensor store and order the required parts. Now I'm only going to cover the parts needed to build the gateway, but you probably want to go up to the build section and find a couple sensors that you're interested in building and order parts for those as well. Some of them can take a while to arrive um, or to be shipped, so, so it's always nice to order in advance so you don't have to wait forever for that one part you need. Okay, so the first thing we'll need is we'll need a Arduino Nano. So that's the Arduino we're going to use for the gateway. Next, we're going to want to order a radio. So I'm just going to go over to the radios, and there's two different types that you could use. There's this standard uh, 2.4 gigahertz wireless um, transceiver with no antenna, or it's just an antenna that's built in um, to the circuit board, and then there's this long range antenna. Uh, it supposedly can go up to 1,000 meters. Um, for the gateway, as you may have recognized from the video, I'm actually using a long-range antenna for my gateway. Um, I've found actually though that it's not really necessary. My house is pretty small, so I have uh, been able to use these smaller radios for my gateway as well. But we're just going to choose this radio, so whatever size your house is, it should work. Um, but if you want to, uh, just start out with the smaller 10 pieces um, of the antenna built into the circuit board radio type feel free to get those and you could always upgrade to this later. Okay, so next we need some cables. So I started out getting the 20 centimeter cables, but I've since started using a lot more frequently the 10 centimeters. Um, they fit in my boxes a little bit better and they're just a little bit more compact. Uh, if you're not sure, you could get both the 20 centimeters and the 10 centimeters if you're unsure. Just go with whatever's cheaper and then buy more later. Okay, and finally we're going to need some capacitors. So I'll just go to the components here. I'd recommend just getting this 100 piece uh, capacitor set here. Notice it's a sorted value, so you can um, use this for other future projects as well. But we're going to need, need a capacitor to filter out the power to our radio. So now that we have our parts, what we're going to do is connect up the wires to our gateway. So I'm going to show you how to reference the MySensor site first and then I'm going to show you how I actually connect it in my Arduino. So what you have here is uh, on your chip, uh, whether it's the long range or just the antenna built in, you're going to have a black square, sorry, a white square around pin number one. So notice over here we have ground, it's labeled ground and that's pin number one. That also corresponds with this here. Next we have pin number two which is VCC or power. So then you're going to connect that up to the 3.3 volt source on your Nano. Then we have the CE pin, which if you look at that, it's going to go onto pin 9 of your Nano. And then we have the orange, or sorry, the yellow CSN or CS pin. That's going to go to pin 10 on your Nano, which corresponds with this. And I think you get the idea. Okay, so here's my Nano. You'll notice that the pins are labeled. Uh, A stands for analog. So you're going to actually look for D for digital. So that's all of the pins that you'll be connecting for the gateway are going to be connected to the digital. Uh, if it doesn't say D, um, it should just say, you know, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. But the analog should always be labeled A for analog. Okay, so then you'll just find the pins and you just slide your DuPont cables right over there. Make sure you get a good connection. If Sometimes I've found that I've had to turn mine. You can see this one over here. Well, maybe you can't, but I changed the orientation of it because it wasn't a super tight fit on there. So sometimes um, if it's not a tight fit, when you rotate it uh, 90 degrees, it'll be a little bit better fit. So all I did was connect it into these pins on my Nano and then on the radio. So my radio is actually labeled, so it was easier for me uh, to follow. But if yours isn't labeled, just look for that white square. So that's the white square I was talking about. That's going to be pin 1, and then it's going to go 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, and correspond with the My Sensors web page. Okay, so the other thing we're going to want to do is we're going to put a capacitor 
uh, on your ground pin and your 3.3 um, volt pin. What that will do is just help regulate your power a little bit. It'll help even out those spikes uh, and then give it a little bit more power when your radio needs to transmit. So uh, if none of that makes any sense to you, that's okay. Um, def definitely didn't to me when I was first starting out. Basically, you'll just want to slide that capacitor in. Um, make sure the uh, capacitor should have a white stripe on it. That's going to be your ground side. So slide that into your ground um, DuPont cable. The 3.3 volt will just get the other leg of your capacitor. Now the capacitor I'm using is a 4.7 UF. If you can see that. Uh, right there, 4.7. Uh, but you can go a little bit higher if you need to. And then I'll just give it a little bit more power um, filtering. So that's it. Just plug in those cables and you're good to go. So now that we've built our gateway, we need to upload our code to it. So I'm just going to go to arduino.cc, click on the download link, and it's going to bring me to this page. So then you'll just choose the software that you want. So I'm going to choose the Windows installer because I'm on Windows here. And then contribute if you want. And download. So once it's downloaded, you just install. I just leave all the defaults and then install any drivers and that's it. So now that we have Arduino installed, we're going to need to download the MySensors code. So go to the API and download section of the site, and then you'll download the latest release, which in this case is 1.4. So you just click on the download button, and that'll download the code from GitHub. And then you'll open the, uh, the zip that it downloads for you. Now I recommend keeping a copy of this zip file somewhere. Uh, just save it in some place where you can find it next time. I've accidentally overwrote my code before, and then the, the versions on GitHub will change occasionally, and then I couldn't go back and find the exact version that I had. Um, but thankfully I had backed up that zip file, so I just went back into there. Um, because ideally you don't want to make any changes to the, the master code, you want to create your own files if you make any modifications to the sensor files or things like that. So long story short, save the zip file in a place where you can get it again. And then what you're going to do is in the Arduino uh, master folder is you'll need to install the libraries. So in these this libraries folder, um, all these libraries will be used by the MySensors project. So you'll need to go to the place where you installed Arduino. So in my case, it's going to be my C drive, program files x86, Arduino, libraries and then what I'll do is just drag all of these libraries into the libraries folder. Uh, if it already has one there you can just skip it. Okay so now all the libraries are there so we're ready to start uploading our code. So you'll find the code in the libraries folder uh, in your Arduino installation. So mine's in the C program files, x86 folder, Arduino, libraries, and then my sensors. So before we go to uploading our code, I just want to show you a couple things that you may want to change. Uh, if you're totally new to this and you just want to upload, you can do that. You can ignore this section, but I'm going to show you this my config file uh, really quickly here so um, you're aware of some of the changes that you may want to make. So just open it in any text editor. I use Notepad++, but uh, Notepad will work, or any other text editor that you use. So a couple of things. This uh, channel here, if you're finding that um, you have interference uh, because it uses a Wi-Fi, uh, the same uh, channel as Wi-Fi, um, you can go in and you can change it here. So you can um, figure out the different channels here, 0 through 127. Um, and then, you know, there's calculators and things like that online that you can determine which channel is best 
for your area. I've changed mine just slightly. The other thing that you can change here is the, the PA level and the PA level gateway. So if you're using the, the long range antenna radio, uh, you may want to keep this setting at low. Uh, that radio tends to draw a lot of power and if you're just plugging it right off the nano, which is what we'll be doing in our example here, it may actually try to draw too much power and then cause the signal to be um, intermittent or not working as well as you'd want. So that's why the default here is set to low. But if you're using one of the other radio modules, you can go ahead and increase it. It shows you here what the different levels are that you can use. So there's min, low, um, high, and max. So you can experiment with those. So what you do is change it, make sure you save it, and then upload your code, and then it will put that gateway level there. Um, and then notice the, the PA level, which is the default sensor level here, that's set to max. So feel free to experiment with those if some things aren't working correctly for you. If none of this makes any sense, leave it at the default and move on. Okay, so in the examples uh, folder is where you'll find all of the code for the different sensors you can build. So this is where I said if you're going to make any changes, you want to copy this folder out. So I just, whenever I make a change to any of these folders or any of these um, programs, I'll just copy this to the My Documents folder and then I'll make the changes there and upload it from there. But we're not going to be making any changes to the, uh, the serial gateway code. So we can just scroll down to that, double click on the serial gateway folder, and then double click on the serial gateway uh, file. So this is the first time I've launched Arduino, so I'm just going to allow uh, access to Java. Okay, so here's the serial gateway code. So I'm going to pause here and show you how to connect in the Arduino to the computer. Okay, so I know this isn't rocket science here, but I wanted to make this as step-by-step -step as I could. So um, what you'll need to do is plug in your USB cable that hopefully came with your Nano. Uh, obviously into the Nano here. And then you'll take your other end here and plug that into your computer. So now I'm just going to connect in the Arduino to my computer. And then it will install the device driver software. Okay, that took forever. But once that's done, you need to do two things. So you'll need to go to Tools and you'll need to select your board. So we're using the Nano. So I'm going to choose Arduino Nano, obviously. And then the other thing you'll need to do is select your port. So if you're not sure which port it is, you can go into your device manager and check for it there. Um, but I'm pretty sure mine is the uh, COM4 because that's what it just showed me it installed uh, in my device driver uh, installation there. So make sure you always do that every time you upload uh, your code. You'll need to, and I always just double check it, even if I'm only using Nanos or Pro Minis, something like that. I always check to make sure that's correct, and then your port is correct. Okay, so if you want, uh, you can then just upload your code. Just use the Upload button here or File Upload. Uh, but before um, I do that here, I'm going to show you um, just how this code looks. So these are comments here, uh, just a little bit of a description of what this is. And then notice that uh, there's a section here in LEDs. So this gateway actually supports LEDs. So if you want to connect a green, yellow, and red LED up to the pins, uh, and it specifies the pins down here. So it's going to be 6, 5, and 4. Uh, you could do that. And then it would actually flash each time it got a transmission uh, received or sent a transmission um, if you want to. So in my uh, Ethernet gateway that I built, I actually have these LEDs connected. It's actually really helpful for me when I see a motion center, sensor triggered or something, I can see the lights flashing. So anyway, if you wanted to connect those up, you could, but we're not going to since this is just a really basic getting started video. But I did want to make you aware of that, um, that that's available to you. Uh, so this is what the rest of the code looks like. Um, honestly, it's pretty much gibberish to me. So if it is to you, don't feel bad. Um, so that's it. So you just hit the upload button here. 
and then notice it says it's compiling the sketch. So if there are any errors here in the sketch, so if you start making your own sketches, um, this is where it would show you if there are any errors. Um, once it's done compiling, it will start uploading. So you can see it says it's uploading here. And then you can't see this right now, but the LEDs on my Nano are flashing. So you can tell that it's, um, it's still processing and uploading. And then the LEDs will stop flashing. The done uploading message will be there. So that's it. You've just created a serial gateway. Congratulations.